Puerto Rico earthquake forecast. Dozens of more large aftershocks are likely. Puerto Rico has been under a state of emergency since January 6, 2020. This is uh, from the conversation on the mines unleashed. Multiple strong and damaging earthquakes in southern Puerto Rico starting around December 28, 2019 caused many serious injuries and collapsed numerous buildings, including a multi-story school in the town of Guanica, which is southwest of the island. That luckily was empty at the time. These quakes are the most damaging to strike Puerto Rico since 1918, over 100 years ago. And the island has been under a state of emergency since January 6, 2020. This flurry of quakes includes onshore, and offshore events near the town of Indios and along Puerto Rico's southwest coast. So far, it has included 11 after, uh, foreshocks, 11 foreshocks. Smaller earthquakes that preceded the largest event or main shock with magnitudes of four and greater. Major quakes occurred on January 6, magnitude 5.8, and January 7, magnitude 6.4 main shock, followed by numerous large aftershocks. Seismologists like me are constantly working to better understand earthquakes, including advancing ways to help vulnerable communities before, during, and after damaging events. The physics of earthquakes are astoundingly complex, but our abilities to forecast future earthquakes during a strong sequence of events in real time is improving. Forecasting earthquakes is not a strict prediction. It's more like a weather forecast in which scientists estimate the likelihood of future earthquake activity based on quakes that have already occurred, using established statistical laws that govern earthquake behavior. An undersea fault zone. Puerto Rico spans a complex boundary between the Caribbean and North American tectonic plates, which are sliding past each other in this region at a relative speed of about two centimeters a year. Over geologic time, this motion has created uh, the Muertos Trough, a 15,000-foot depression in the seafloor south of the island. This plate boundary is riddled with intercontinental fault structures. The present activity is occurring on and near at least three interrelated large faults. Faults are pre-existing weak zones between stronger rocks, in response to surprisingly small force stress changes, they rapidly slip to produce earthquakes. The hair trigger nature of fault slips means that predicting the precise timing, location, and size of individual quakes is extremely challenging, if not impossible. During an earthquake sequence, changing stresses act on nearby fault systems as stress is gradually redistributed within the earth. This process generates thousands of protracted aftershocks. Many earthquake sequences simply start with the main shock, but it's not especially rare for scientists to recognize after the fact that foreshocks were occurring before the main event. Improvements in earthquake instrumentation and analysis are helping scientists detect foreshocks more often, although we have not yet figured out how to recognize them in real time. Will one shock lead to another? Researchers have known for over a century that the rate of earthquakes following a main shock declines in a way that we can characterize statistically. There is also a well-established relationship between the magnitude of earthquakes and their relative number during an earthquake sequence. In most seismically active regions, for a decrease of one magnitude unit, say from 4.0 to 3.0, people can expect to experience about 10 times as 3s compared to 4s in any given time period. Using such statistical relationships allows us to forecast the probability and sizes of future earthquakes while an earthquake sequence is underway. Put another way, if we are experiencing an aftershock sequence, we can project the future rate of earthquakes and what magnitudes we expect those quakes to have. For example, as of January 14, the USGS 
forecast estimated 3% chance of one or more quakes larger than 6.4 magnitude in Puerto Rico over the next seven days. It also noted that the region should expect more between 40 and 210 smaller quakes with magnitude 3 or larger, sizes that are likely to be felt during that time. We extended statistical modeling of earthquake sequences that include foreshock and aftershock probabilities. Seismologists can forecast the likelihood of key earthquake scenarios to inform the public safety efforts while uh, earthquakes are occurring. For example, the USGS also estimated as of January 13 that there was an 81% chance that the largest shock had already occurred, namely the magnitude 6.4 quake on January 7. The agency calculated a 17% chance that a closely sized doublet 6.4 earthquake could yet occur. Recognizing in real time when a set of earthquakes is likely to be a foreshock sequence is challenging an active area of earthquake forecasting research. Progress in the effective forecasting and communication of ongoing earthquake hazards could mean the difference between life and death for people in the Eastern Caribbean and other seismically active areas on an increasingly urbanized planet. It's by Richard Astor. The, comment, the conversation on Creative Commons, because uh, Creative Commons and this is on my mind leashed. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today more of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.